Now that we've covered the basics of using Roadway Optimizer in the previous video, let's see how we might use the software to compare different ways to light the same roadway. You might also use this feature to compare similar luminaires from different manufacturers. Returning to where we left off in the last video, let's quickly review what we had done. We have Roadway Standard IES RP8-2000. That will be upgraded to RP8-2014 in the coming version 16 release of AGI32. We have an R table of R3. We have roadway layout of two rows opposite with a median. The roadway width is 24 feet and the median width is 10 feet. The roadway width implies in the direction of travel, two lanes in direction of travel. And we drive on the right side. The calculation area is on the bottom. We have two rows of luminaires. Row 2 is in green across the top and row 1 is in red across the bottom. The photometric files are selected here. Mounting height is 35 feet. Setback of the pole is 6 feet from the curb line and we can see that in our little drawing here. The luminaire definition has a 6 foot arm which places the luminaire right at the curb line. Previously Optimizer calculated a pole spacing of 203 feet. We decided to try to fudge just a couple more feet out of it so we clicked to calculate based on set spacing and entered a 205 foot spacing in our rows and we still make the criteria. We can see nothing is shown in red here. Here's our optimization criteria in order by priority. Right now we're looking at the luminance grid. Little black arrow says luminance. Similarly we could look at the illuminance grid by clicking here. Notice the black arrow. Numbers are now illuminance. Okay. Excellent. Let's go up to the top of the form. Notice this is layout number one. Let's enter a description. Two rows opposite. Now select the button to copy the layout. That's right here. We'll copy layout one to layout two. Now click the button for layout two. We have layout one actually reproduced here in layout two. Let's change the description to two rows staggered. Now let's change the roadway layout two rows staggered with median. Everything else stays the same. What we've done is rather than having the poles opposite one another, we now have them in a staggered configuration. Let's change the behavior of Optimizer back to doing its own optimization. So we'll hit the radio button, calculate spacing to achieve this criteria. Click the Calculate button. Notice the results are similar. Calculated spacing of 202 feet. Well, let's see if we can't bump that back up to 205. Calculate based on set spacing. Calculate. Looks like we still meet our criteria at 205 feet. Once again, this beats the optimizer just by a smidgen. So our staggered layout is now option two, or layout number two. Now let's try adding a longer arm to move the light center out into the roadway a tiny bit. This might actually help us out. Maybe we can space the poles just a little bit further apart. So let's go back to layout one, select the copy layout button, and let's copy it into layout number three. So we're back to our opposite arrangement, not the staggered arrangement, and we'll copy it over to layout three. Now let's select the radio button for layout three. Let's append the description with nine foot arm. Now what we need to do is go back to the luminaire definition window and create a new definition with a nine foot arm. So in the label cell, say dash nine foot arm and let's change the arm length to nine feet. Redefine, close. Alright, so now what we need to do is select the different definition with the nine foot arm. There we go, now we can see the light center has actually moved slightly out into the roadway, three feet. Let's calculate the spacing to achieve our criteria. 
Oh, we've moved up to 219 feet. We might actually be able to make this 220. Yep. All right. So we've got another 15 feet in pole spacing. This may or may not be enough to justify the higher cost of the longer arm. Let's go to the Comparison tab. Here we have layouts 1, 2, and 3. We can see all the calculations and all the specifics. Of course, everything is the same except for the layouts and, of course, the calculations. Here is where you may need to tighten up the strap on your illuminating engineering cap. It is not unusual for layouts which appear very similar on first inspection to be less so. Examining all of the various calculations produced by the RP8 system can tell you a lot about the lighting design. Our staggered layout is number two. So for example, notice the staggered layout is more uniform in terms of illuminance. Check out our maximum to minimum ratio of 2.6 as opposed to 5.3 7.9. The averages are fairly close, 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 0.77. The luminance numbers are also fairly comparable. We achieved our 0 0.6 average candelas per meter squared. Look at our maximums, they're all right the same together. The minimums are all very close. So the luminance of the pavement is actually very similar in all three layouts. But now look at the visibility level. The small target visibility for the staggered layout is down at a little less than 2. But for the opposite layouts is over 4. That's interesting. Why is that? To understand this we need to look at the luminance of the background or the pavement versus the luminance of the target. Looking at the background luminance, it's very similar for all three layouts, average, max, and min. But let's look at the target luminance. These are the small targets that sit vertically on the roadway. The averages are the same, very close, but look at the maximums. The maximums are much higher in terms of the opposite arrangements. Look at the minimums. The minimums for the opposite arrangements are literally zero. This means a dark target on a lighter background or similar background pavement with the opposite arrangements. So that's essentially negative visibility level or negative contrast seeing in silhouette. To understand this a little bit better it's worth looking at the point by point information. Let's look at the visibility level for layout number one. This is an opposite arrangement. Zooming in a little bit we can actually identify contrast bands. Notice these negative numbers. These are negative contrast or negative visibility numbers as we get closer to the pole. Remember, the observer is moving in this direction. However, once we pass a particular pole, the numbers are positive. So we have positive contrast to negative contrast. Let's look at the staggered arrangement. we don't quite see the same thing. There's a little bit of negative contrast, but they're not necessarily bands of negative contrast, so the gradient has changed. So where the targets are dark and the pavement is lighter, we have negative contrast, negative visibility level. Where the targets are lighter against a lighter background, positive contrast, the target is lighter than the background. So the worst case is when the target luminance is very close to the background luminance. There's little or no contrast. This is seen in visibility level numbers between plus one and minus one. The target actually blends with the background. So by virtue of the STV calculation in RP8, the presence of positive to negative contrast bands in roadway lighting produces a higher visibility level. To close, it is not my intention to insinuate the superiority of one layout over another and it is impossible to generalize as various roadways may behave differently. The intent is to simply point out how to see these trends in your calculations. AGI 32's Roadway Optimizer. Making roadway calculations fun.